Okay, so I want to once again formally welcome you to the introduction to computer uh, virtual class. Uh, this is the course for 100 level students and um, I enjoy you to be part of the class. If you have questions, you take it down so that once we finish the class, I will answer the question. My name is Mr. Sati Satmer Dapel and I will be your lecturer for the period of the course. Today's presentation will provide you an overview um, of computers and exploring uh, the definition of computers, also looking at some key features as well as historical development and the impact that uh, computers have on our lives. So let's look at the definition. We say that a computer is an electronic device. This is the first characteristics we need to take note. It is an electronic device that is capable of receiving data, right? This is the second characteristics, receiving data as input. This is the third one. And then processing it, this is number four, according to a set of required instructions, this is number five, stored in its database, hmm? this is uh, number six, to produce an output, number seven, call information, number eight. These are the eight definitional characteristics that we need to take note when we are defining a computer. It is an electronic device, that is number one, that is capable of receiving data as input and then processing that data according to a set of required instructions stored in its database to produce an output called information. Now, these definitional characteristics, let's look at them bit by bit. When we say it is an electronic device, what do we mean? We mean that a computer operates using electronic components requiring electricity to function. In other words, we have to know that without power, the computer cannot work. And when we talk about power, we're talking about electricity, positive and negative charges that we can use. Okay, so any computer you have, whether your a phone or your desktop or your laptop or a server or any computer device, okay? It requires power. And we said that it takes in what? Data as input. What is data? Data simply means raw facts. When we say a raw fact, it's a fact that has not undergone processing. So data means what? Raw facts okay and that raw fact is actually fed into the computer now the act of feeding this raw fact into the computer is where we call input okay the input is the device that helps collect or takes in this particular raw fact so raw facts and figures are fed into the computer through input devices we have a lot of them. We have input devices like keyboards, like scanners, and things like that. Some other input devices that we may wish to know include maybe your mouse, include your keyboard, include your joystick, all right? Include a, a camera, microphone, and so on and so forth. Okay, another characteristic is processing. We say the processing is the act of manipulating data. And this act of manipulating data manipulation is the processing. Why do we call it data manipulation? We call it data manipulation because the data will have to change its form from one form to the other. So the act of manipulating or changing this particular form or this data is processing. 
I can go to the farm when I farm cassava. And then I harvest cassava. Once I harvest cassava, I now bring it home. Then I change the form of this cassava and turn it into gari. Now, the process of the act of changing this cassava to gari is called processing. So I am processing cassava into gari. So I'm changing its form, right? So it's like you, you go to the farm, you harvest the yam, and you are changing it. So the act of manipulating data, which is this rough fat, is processing. So the reason you manipulate this particular data is so that you can get information. And the information is what you get as an output. Information is the meaningful result that is produced or delivered through output devices. That is information. Now, for you to get the desired output, this processing that we talked about needs to be carried out in a particular format. It needs to be carried out using a set of instructions that are actually stored in the computer memory. Now, this set of instructions that we are talking about is basically called softwares. So a software is a set of instructions that actually are stored in the computer. We're going to be looking at that in another chapter, right? So the computer we said is an electronic device which have the ability of receiving data as input and then processing it according to a set of required instructions stored in its memory or database to produce an output called information. So what are some of the key features of computers? Number one is speed, right? The computers can perform millions or billions of calculations per second. In fact, it's one of the reasons that we, we use the computer because it can perform this, these activities per second, all right? Very, very, very interesting. So coming, okay. Uh, okay. Sorry, just a minute. Trying to get this. Okay. Right, just a minute. Let me reshare it. I'm trying to all right. So I think we're good to go. Yes, so we're looking at the futures. So one of the futures is uh, speed, right? Speed. And the computers can perform millions or billions of calculations uh, per second. And that is one of the importance. The second one is automation. Computers can perform tasks automatically without human intervention. The third one is accuracy. Computers can perform tasks with high precision and minimal error. Then we have versatility. Computers can perform a wide range of tasks from simple calculations to complex, uh, complex ones, right? So that is why we look at computer. Another additional characteristics is storage. Computers can store vast amount of data in their memory for secondary storage. And then diligence. Computers do not suffer from fatigue and can perform repetitive tasks consistently, right? Then you have reliability. Modern computers are highly reliable and can operate for a long period 
without failure, all right? That is computer. Now, let's look at the historical development, the history of computers. The computers, we're going to be looking at the technological advancement or the technological changes that happen within the period. We have what we call first generation computers. We're going to be looking at the five generations. The first generation of computers is from 1940 to the 1950s, right? And during this generation, the major technological advancement was the creation of what we call vacuum tubes. Vacuum tubes are like very large tubes that are used um, for the processing of data. Very large, so one computer can fill up a particular room because of the vacuum tubes. So they are large in size, but they are very, very slow in processing sp speed and they have limited memory, okay? So they are the first generation computers. Then we have the second generation computers, which is from the 1950s to the 1960s. And the major technological advancement is the production of transistors. Transistors are a small device that actually replace, um, uh, replace these vacuum tubes, all right? They are smaller in size and they are more efficient. So the first generation will produce vacuum tubes. The second generation from 1950s to 1960s is the production of transistors, the invention of transistors that replace the vacuum tubes. And the third generation from 1960s to the 1970s, they produce what we call integrated circuits. Some people call it ICs, all right? It's another circuitry in the board, small, all right? And uh, it is smaller than the transistors, all right? And um, uh, it has higher speed than even the transistors. So you see from the first generation to the second generation, what did we observe? Uh, just a minute. Okay, so sorry about that. I've been trying to see if I could get some images for you, but uh, fortunately I couldn't get that. All right, so the concept here is that in the third generation, in the first generation, we look at the fact that the size is bigger, is slower. Second generation, there is an improvement. The size is a little smaller than the first generation and a little faster. In the third generation, the size is even smaller and it's even faster and more cost effective. And then in the fourth generation, in the 1970s, they, where they produce microprocessors. Microprocessors are much smaller, way faster, more affordable, and that is where it led to the production of personal computers. Okay? And then... We have the fifth generation, which is where we talk about the artificial intelligence, the quantum computing, and parallel processing. And in this generation, we focus more on AI and machine learning, where we have robots, where we have um, uh, 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 information at our fingertips way, 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 way faster, all right? So that is uh, what we have on the historical development. How about the impact of computers? 
All right, computers revolutionize the industries. Computers have transformed industries like healthcare, uh, finance, manufacturing, and so on and so forth. In fact, all the industries that you can think of, computers have revolutionized it. If you go to the banking industries, they use computers. If you go to the hospitals, they use computers. If you go to the production companies, they use computers. If you go to the educational sector, they use computers. Virtually every sector in life, they run computers. Okay. Then you have also what computer helps us to do, enhance communication. Computers have enabled instant communication across the globe through emails, videos, and social media. There is so much more that the computer have done when it comes to communication. All right, something is happening here now. Bam! The entire world is about uh, is, is 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 aware of it. With a click of a button, everybody gets to see everything. Okay. Then you have increased efficiency. Computers have automated tasks, reducing the human effort and increasing productivity. What about the future of computing? The future of computing. Remember that we are in an age of artificial intelligence. That is where we are now. After now, we are going to have what we call quantum computing. After quantum computing, we are going to be talking about Internet of Things. After Internet of Things, we'll be looking at cloud computing and then virtual reality. These are all the technologies that are shaping the world of computing today. And so whichever field you are, whether you are in marketing, you are in accounting, you are in business admin, whichever field that you are, um, just know that you can be able to do any of this, all right? Uh, then we have the, in conclusion, the powerful tools that computer uh, aids us to do. Please, can you stop uh, using these arrows? Unless maybe I will disable you, okay? Stop using that. Thank you very much, okay? So um, computers are powerful tools that have revolutionized the world and um, uh, they provide exciting possibilities. The future of computing holds exciting possibilities for innovation and progress. So um, continuous evolution, the field of computing is constantly evolving with new technologies emerging. So like I said, this is just to introduce us to uh, the concept of computing and what we are looking at today is chapter one, the definitional characteristics. So I hope this lecture has been informative to you. I'm going to pause here and open the mic. If you have a question, uh, you will just raise your electronic hand uh, and then I'm going to call you. Then you will unmute yourself to ask your question. While you are muting yourself to ask your question, I am going to generate a link where you will sign in your attendance. So if you have your Zoom device, uh, your device on your hand, you're going to see uh, something that will pop up now. So you have to be very observant. Once it pops up, then you will use it, uh, fill it up for your attendance. That is what we are going to be uh, using for our attendance uh, each, each time we have a class, right? So um, uh, I'm sure you should have seen it now. So while you are answering it, I'm going to unmute you so that uh, you can ask your question. So if you have a question, just raise up your electronic hand and then I will call you. Thank you.